Well, hello and happy Monday, everybody. Happy Monday, everybody. Guess you forgot to mute. <laughs> a little double welcome there from Melvin Leroy. You may recognize these two aircraft, maybe not. I'm on the left there. There's the uh, Beechcraft Duke 60, November 6 to 6 November. And uh, just off our left wing is, well, not your not your Delta Victor call sign that you're used to seeing, but that's uh, that's the best we can do as far as rendering for Slant Alpha Adventures and his Beach Baron 58. So it's a couple of Beechcraft today, and we are on the ground as part of his tour of the lower 48. We're on the ground at Mason County. And we are getting ready to fly across Lake Michigan. You can see kind of the route that uh, he's looking at. We're going to try to follow him. Uh, we may deviate a little bit, uh, but we're, the whole goal tonight is to try to be VFR. And the one big obstacle that uh, we have to avoid early on is this restricted airspace here. Um, and I'm not sure why it's restricted, to be honest with you, but um, we're going to have to stay, I mean, either go north or south, and uh, it's kind of nice. We've got a VOR up here, Manitowoc Municipal, that we can use, um, and we're going to go ahead and uh, just, just have that tuned in just to make sure that we stay, again, north of that restricted area, and then uh, once we get there, plan is to just start heading southwest and try to use those visual references that uh, are along the way here and we'll see you know there's uh, some windmills some big lake there um, you know there's a, another smaller lake Dodge County um, you know so there's there's just things along the way that hopefully we'll be able to see and then the goal will be to uh, get down here to Dane County Regional Troll Field and that'll be it for tonight he has already flown one of his legs we were a little bit late getting on tonight got a good reason for that hey downwind simp checking in uh oh he's saying who do I watch well um, if you want comic relief I think I think this is the channel for you um, if you want, you know, maybe improper procedure, you want some kind of a glitch in uh, checklists, yeah, you're on the right, you're on the right channel. If you want to learn something, um, you want to know how it's supposed to be done, uh, absolutely, you want to slide back over to, to the Slant Alpha Adventures Twitch channel. So, um, yeah, we're just kind of finishing up our last, speaking of checklist, we're finishing up our last few things we have to do. There is, uh, let's see, just to make sure here. Where are we? All right, let me get this out of the way. Thanks for checking in, Downwind, by the way. Always good to talk to you. I think we're right here, so we are, no, we're down here. No, we're not. Where are we? Is this us? I have no idea where we are. Track my flight. That usually, we may have, oh man, yeah. So we're in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. We're going to have some, uh, yeah, we're going to have some ATC tonight, so that's pretty cool. We're going to go ahead and, like I say, just finish last few things on our checklist um, and uh, make some contact with ATC and then we'll get ready to go we'll check in like like we do like always we'll check in with uh, Mr. Slan Alpha he's rocking and rolling he's doing his thing a great channel if you haven't if you haven't checked it out it's definitely worth the uh, worth checking out he's flying the Baron on X-Plane and he's got the Reality exp Expansion Pack going so 
he has a few extra things that he has to take care of before he gets ready to go himself. Um, but yeah, we'll like I say, we'll check in with him as well, and we will make sure that we uh, make sure that we stay somewhat close to him. Now, as I'm looking at my V pilot, I'm only showing Chicago Center here, so this is interesting. Um, we may uh, we may make, we may make a call to Chicago just to see if he controls this airspace. But again, looking at yeah, looking at Batastic, it looks like the Minneapolis MSP Center kind of wraps around here. Here's where we're at. We are we'll definitely be in Chicago's airspace. Well, I guess I shouldn't say that. It appears that we'll be in Chicago's airspace. Um, by the time we're all done but yeah not not 100 percent sure so we're gonna we'll we'll ask when in doubt let's ask so there goes uh, rob we're gonna make our call to uh chicago and oh there comes minneapolis st paul speaking of which so let's uh change over to 3340 and then we'll chase rob down the runway here and we'll go flying we'll go wheels up Oops, 33, 3340. There we go. Minneapolis Center, Duke, November 262, November. November 262, November, Yes, sir, we're on the ground, uh, Ludington, and we would like to request a VFR departure to the uh, northwest. I think I have anything filed here. I'm sorry, thank you. Uh, yes, sir. On the ground, uh, Ludington, and uh, requesting VFR departure to the northwest. And I, th I think I just filed my flight plan. I don't think it was on file already. Oh, I did 262 November again. Crud. Should be 626. Oh, boy. Had that problem last night. Only messed up the call sign once. He's trying to find where the heck we're at. Delta. Uh, number 262, number Roger. Um, I believe you're on the ground at a non power field. Um, that's, oh, uh, not something geez. we're going to be able to provide any sort of AT service or DTC service to on the ground. You can give us a request uh, in the air if you're looking for flight following. Um, probably won't be able to see you down super low there. Maybe um, if you can get up above 3,000 or so, I should be able to pick you up if you're looking for flight following somewhere. But uh, part will be your discretion out of there. Okay, understood. Uh, appreciate the confirmation. 262 November. Yeah, I did not look at that. That was not... Yeah, you're right. Nothing. I don't see anything. No, uh... Yeah, no tower, no no anything. So, un... un uh, untowered, uncontrolled airspace. So we could just rock and roll. Well, it's never a bad thing to check in with the ATC just to make sure that they know where you are and you know where they are and all that good stuff. So again, uh, 111 zero, zero is where we're heading first. We also remember yesterday we had to go all the way through so that we could make sure that we were on our uh, V-Lock and not on our GPS. So our CDI is, is in the right spot. Just running through the checklist here System test real quick. Okay. Altimeter set. Frequencies are set. Our course heading is going to be roughly 284. All right in that range there. Okay, let's take a look. I, I don't know. If, here's the deal. I think... Rob, he's an X-plane, of course, and he's got a little different scenery than we do. I'll show you what I mean. I don't normally peek out of the uh, cockpit here, but I saw him. Yeah, see, he's 
he's almost going down as if he has a run or a taxiway right there and I'm showing that we need to back taxi so we're gonna hold short and we'll back taxi after he departs that'll give us a chance just to make sure we have everything ready to go Okay, CDI is set, and again, we're not really going to be using this, we just want to make sure that's set to VLOCK. We will try to stay true to our slant alpha navigation because those are really, really good skills to have. And uh, let's, have a, let's have a listen to slant alpha as he takes off. Downwind Sim says, is there a way to fake a CTAF between you and Melvin Leroy when you guys are flying on that Sim by voice? Well, I didn't join my Discord voice channel. If we were going to do that, we could do that over my Discord voice channel, but I always forget to, uh, to join that when I start the show. That'd be one way to do it, but there's no way to do it over the Batsim no. network by voice since it would only be by text. Yeah. Yeah, the only time. Screaming Cheese says, This is a stream I've been looking for for months. GA, PFR, <laughs> no bad music. <laughs> narrating. Uh, Dan Winston says, That would have been fun. Yeah, I, I, um, I think at some point maybe we'll do a stream where we get a bunch of guys together to do some pattern work and uh, some CTAP calls. That wouldn't be a bad idea. But, uh, yeah, really, I should have probably done a little bit of that here just to practice because. At some point, right? That's that's what we're promised. Um, promised that voice unicom like you see in the real world, and uh, especially appealing to pilots like us that wanna wanna fly out of these uncontrolled airfields, wanna make those calls, wanna talk to the other guys that are in the neighborhood. So, all right, here we go. We are. Uh, Set, let's see. Flaps are down. Approach. Don't really need those, but landing and taxi lights are on. And we're ready. Throttle up. Let's go flying. Weather here, by the way, is dead calm. Just a perfect, beautiful day. Some cloud cover. But we should be below that. Positive rate. Gear is coming up. And we'll make our turn. 284 heading. Get our flaps up there. We blew through the flap speed just a hair. This aircraft, by the way, does simulate flap damage if you uh, if you leave them out. Same with landing gear. 
if you uh, if you don't get those back in before you get up I'm trying to remember the flap damage speed but uh, anyway you you can damage both of those and uh, yeah have a lot of have a lot of difficulty flying your aircraft okay so here's that haze layer so we we filed 4,500 but I'm not sure that we're going to be able to get there just because as you can see got a little bit of uh, I don't know lake effect sort of fog mist haze I don't know what you'd call it exactly I think we're going to go ahead and call it good right here. Set our altitude. And actually, we'll back it down to 2,500 just so that we are appropriate for a westbound VFR departure. I think that gets us below this haze. And this haze may not last. I don't, I don't know. I'm just... There's really nothing said in the uh, weather information that I've gotten. So hopefully this will just be short-lived. And we'll be able to uh, maybe climb up a little bit. Although, you know, you don't want to get too high. That's kind of the I think the give and take of VFR flying is you, know, you want to be high enough in case something should happen. You'd have time to uh, to react. Yeah, Downwind Sim seeing the same thing I'm seeing. He said, it looks like you're in the MSP airspace, which we are, but as I neglected to check, um, we were at a, an untowered airfield. And if we're only going to be 2,500, there's... Uh, yeah, there's no way he's going to pick us up on his on his radar. Life vest is in the back, behind the back left seat, uh, right next to mine. So if we have to do that water landing, that's that's where where we go. Also, the 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 big life raft is back there too. Toss that out first. Pull the pull the white cord, and then we're good to go. All right. Well, welcome aboard. Glad to have you with us. We had initially planned to uh, hit the first part of this leg with uh, with Slant Alpha Adventure, but um, kind of had a uh, fun thing that, that interrupted, well, I shouldn't even say interrupted, just had a, had a little fun event um, that we planned sort of off the, off the cuff, offhand. The spur of the moment, we decided uh, to take my daughter-in-law out for her birthday dinner, and I thought she was going to just go out with her husband, but... Uh, we decided to make it a family affair kind of at the last minute, so we went out, had a really nice dinner, had a great time. Um, they had to come back, put the little guy to bed. He's had a busy day, and uh, anyway, put us a little bit behind, but that's okay. That's, that's, that's what life is all about. So let's take a peek here and see, again, what we should be seeing. I want to just double check and make sure. 284. Yeah, we're doing pretty good, I think. Our speed is plenty, plenty fast. That VOR should, should pop in here anytime. And then we can 
more carefully navigate. In fact, probably you, know, you kind of heard Slan Alpha talking a little bit about might be smart to just maybe even be a little bit further north than we need to be just in case the wind's blowing a little bit which right now it's it's still absolutely beautiful one knot wind <laughs> clear but you know if there was a breeze well we're, we're close to 3,000 so it's sorry two knots uh, but you know there there could be a, a little bit of a breeze that could be pushing us off course and so we'll give ourselves a little bit of leeway here and you know it's not like we're gonna it's not like we're shooting the North Atlantic like we were with the with the DC-3 where there was a real chance that um, you know a guy could like completely miss Greenland you know if you went too far south yeah you, you're gonna miss the entire continent of Greenland but um, There's no chance of that here. All right. Well, we let's see here. Um, what were we doing here? Just having a peek right now at the at the maps. So you know, over the last couple of flights, we've been comparing Sky Vector and Navigraph, and I got to tell you, here is this is one of the times where Navigraph really has an advantage. Um, I'm sorry, Sky Vector really has an advantage. Sky Vector comes with this World VFR. Let me move this over this world VFR options and the nice thing about that is you see all this stuff the restricted airspaces you know where the class Bravo Charlie all that stuff is and Navigraph does not have that feature they have a this is a really nice world map so you can kinda of get a nice nice feel for you know where you're flying and, and this might help a lot with VFR because I think it'll have a little bit more detail potentially than um, you know than the uh, sky vector map is but it doesn't have any of the airspace information now if you jump over to low en route you see a little bit more detail you know like you see you get a you get a little bit of a feel for where those uh, where those airspaces are but just not it's not quite the same level of detail. Here's that restricted airspace, you know. Um, but to me, this just has a lot more information. It has, you know, your minimum safe altitudes, and uh, you know, as you zoom in here, you just get a lot more detail with each airspace. So I, I think if I was to put a mark in in either category as far as VFR tools, I think the Sky Vector has a little bit of an edge right there um, yeah downwind sim saying might want a little more altitude over the water yeah you're probably right um, but I just don't I also know we need to stay 500 below the haze layer I guess what we could do if we had to is we could climb and kind of see what the see what it looks like because this this might be one of those haze layers that just kind of stays the same no matter what your altitude is then I guess if worse comes to worse what you do is you just call and you get a pop-up by a far clearance or something like that um, but that sort of defeats the purpose a little bit of what we're trying to do so hopefully it won't come to that again we're trying we're kinda getting up on slant alpha a little bit a little bit sooner than I wanted to try to give him a little bit of a head start because I end up I always end up doing this and I don't I'm not trying to overtake him I want to just kind of stay at his six so we'll climb slow down a little bit here we'll assess our 
visibility and you guys can make the call you know I don't know down one what are you thinking as we're as we're climbing we're getting to 400 are we I mean hey is this hard to tell am I below it am I in it <laughs> I mean I still have good visibility as far as I can see the lake and I can actually now see above me a little bit better so um, yeah, let's level off here at 4,500 and let's just see what it looks like yeah does it look that much different really than 2,500 honestly no it doesn't and so yeah it's always good if you can to have you know, plenty of uh, plenty of altitude underneath you just in case you have an issue of course that's one of the nice things about taking a twin engine plane across the body of water is you always feel like you have redundancy and you know you have that that ability to uh, you know, fly on the fly on the single engine if you have to which by the way uh, engine failure is another thing that this this aircraft does simulate for the longest time as I was first flying it like like every five flights I was getting an engine that was cutting out and I'm like what the heck am I doing wrong well digging and digging and looking through the forums and reaching out to people well what it turned out is that there was a it's just a setting in the config and you can I mean it's always random failures but you can set it for like you know low occurrence of happening medium um, or basically never um, which is where I moved it to what it was at it was at, it was at a like a medium setting which basically said like every within within every five hours there's the possibility of something some system failing which is was just way too much for me as I was learning the aircraft all right well we are what are we hitting here land ho I'm thinking, well, we never did get that VOR to tune in. Um, oh, because we didn't have it. There it is. Okay. I had it loaded up, but I didn't have it uh, entered into my active nav. So where do we want to go here? Hold on, don't get too crazy. What's our... And I must be way, way north of it. Oh yeah, geez, I'm way north of it. Okay, well that's we're well north of that uh, restricted area anyway, so I'm not sure where Rob's at, but we're gonna take a turn and maybe that'll put a little space between him and I. And uh, yeah, no hurry. We do want to find that though. That's our first. That's kind of our first waypoint here, and. We want to make sure that we, we get that airfield. That's a municipal airport that we're aiming for. So looks like we've got a couple of we've got crosswind runways. And um, we want to find that first. And then, you know, we're tracking kind of a kind of a 231 heading out of there. But we're not going to be too, too crazy with that. We're just going to be looking for landmarks now here we will we'll compare as we as we fly and I'm going to turn off I'm going to turn off the map let me let me just hold on let me check on one thing first before I start showing things all right we've got oh, we have plenty of time we're 20 20 some miles all right let's we're not quite on that intercept heading just yet we're not trying to follow any any radial in particular we're just trying to get straight to that airport um, but this will be a good test for us because yeah so I took off I don't want the moving maps but what I want to do now is I am gonna switch this over to 
world map and I'm going to take a look here at you know the you can get a little bit more detailed and you know like if there's some roads or I don't know if they if they show railways or things like that you know we've got a wildlife area um, will be uh, you know, south east of Lake Winnebago and hey there's Oshkosh man I wonder why he didn't fly into Oshkosh that would have been a fun stop uh, but yeah this is the first first lake that we're going to kind of be looking for here um, I don't, don't see what the name of that lake is but then there's oh Sinisippi, Sinisippi Lake, and then we've got Beaver Dam Lake, so things like that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to just see if if we can find them along the way. And again, we're not going to we're not going to use the moving maps. We're going to just try to do it true VFR. We're using a little bit of uh, radio nav right now, which that's not necessarily true VFR, but um, it's going to help us help us at least get headed in the right direction here. And what we could do, let's do this. We'll leave that guy tuned in, but we're going to try this. Let's let's head to the coast. So if I was taking off and flying VFR, and I knew that there was an airport somewhere kind of to the northwest of where I was heading and I knew that I would plot a course that would be well north of that airport and I, then I could pick up the coastline and just follow the coastline down because this airport here is it's pretty close to the coast so if I'm if I come up in here kinda hit the hit the coast and start working my way down I should see that airport and then I can track out of there at about a 2.30 heading or so. That's the plan, Stan. We're still about 20 miles away. No idea where I'm at. I, have, I don't see don't see Rob anywhere, but I do see some haze coming so we may be having to descend a little bit here as well all right while we're flying this coast let's jump over to uh, slant alpha's channel let's hear what he's uh, what he's got to say Gonna, oh, there he is. I've got him. Oh, he's way Should up there. Be able to pretty readily spot this big giant lake out there. Again, it's Winnebago if it's named after the, or uh, named, uh, say, named before the uh, recreational vehicle company. I'm sure it's actually something for like Winnebago. But, yeah, like I said, I don't know. The white guy, so. I'll say it the white guy way. Winnebago, here we come. So I kind of see what he's thinking. Jeez. It actually occurs to me, if you're still on the, on the chat, it actually occurs to me that I was streaming when you followed, I believe. Um, or maybe when I started the stream the other day, um, it just had notified me that you were following me. And I, I thought it was hilarious. Well, first of all, I love the handle, Screaming Cheese. But I also think it's hilarious that you have it in all caps. It literally says, Screaming Cheese! <laughs> 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 Wolf Pack Gamers with us as well. That's another new one. So Wolf Pack Gamer, appreciate you stopping in, checking us out. We uh, we do pretty much general aviation flying on this channel mostly. Occasionally we'll throw in some airliner flying and uh, biz jet flying, but mostly general aviation and, uh, <laughs> and typically uh, and typically we do it through radio navigation only. We don't use the GPS. Notice we got the message screen up kind of blocking the GPS screen over there to the right. So yeah, we 
do this all through old school radio nav techniques and, uh, and then today we're doing it through visual navigation. So we're heading west from Lake Michigan, moving for uh, Lake Winnebago over here. And I would say that would have to be it. That's the one thing, I, I'm pretty weak when it comes to spotting these visual landmarks. Again, I, I, I've always used the radio navigation techniques as, techniques as a crutch. And of course, in my defense, it's only been very recently that the simulator scenery has been good enough to do visual navigation. Yeah, and that's a good point. That's <laughs> great cheese. Yeah, it's a pretty fun, yeah, it's a pretty fun gimmick. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and of course, downwind sim, uh, you know, always riding me for using the binoculars. <laughs> he's a he's a fun guy. You'll enjoy listening to him. Um, downwind sim is saying Manitowoc's only DME. So well, yeah, that's that's gonna help. I think is that what do we have over here? Some lights. I think we've got our airfield. Okay, cool. So. Um, I don't know how well you could hear uh, Rob from Slant Alpha talking about the same thing we were talking about, that uh, Oshkosh is right in the neighborhood, so um, why, not, why not see if we can't go find Oshkosh. So what he's doing is I think he's actually already heading more due west to try to find Lake Winnebago. Oops. Oh, yeah, there he is. He is already heading west. Um, I want Sky Vector. I think he's already heading here to try to find Lake Winnebago, and then he's going to probably do the same thing and just kind of follow the coastline down to find Oshkosh. And then from Oshkosh, we'll head south and try to pick up, you know, Beaver Dam, probably Beaver Dam Lake or something like that. Um, so we'll do the same thing. We've We found our... Our municipal airport, so that's a good first start. Manitowoc, Muni. And I think we'll follow suit. His weather seems a bit better than ours, but again, we've kind of had this haze layer the entire time, and it really hasn't caused us a whole lot of problems. So... Let's head west. Let's do the same thing that uh, the same thing Rob's doing here. And in fact, I'm not even gonna I'm not gonna worry about the v, the VORs. We're just gonna see if we can do it. Visual references only. And the one big point again, I I don't know if you heard his other point that he made that was really really good, um, is that you know. There's a reason why GA and, you know, in particular VFR flying is not as popular, I guess, as, uh, you know, using IFRs and, and uh, GPS and things like that. You know, and one of the big reasons is simply that the scenery hasn't been good enough that you can, you know, pick out landmarks. And... You know, if, if you're looking for, I mean, something like Lake Winne, Winnebago, which is pretty big body of water, I mean, I think that was probably simulated, but many of these others, they just haven't been. And so, thankfully, you know, we've had Orbix and other scenery developers come in and... Minneapolis Center, good evening, Southwest 591. We're holding short of uh, 1 2 right, Minneapolis with information, Kilo, ready to get. So they made it able for pilots like us to to find these find these smaller VFR type uh, landmarks. Excuse me, dinner I had starting to starting to talk back. Downwind says he uses the ortho scenery yeah, and X plane. Time, yeah, that's I hear that. Um, he says it's a game changer. Well, and so downwind, yeah. Um, he's saying the fly-in 
at uh, Oshkosh is the first weekend of August, so we're just a bit early. Well, th this is the time to visit Oshkosh, man, when it's not, you know, twin-engine white, twin-engine waggle your wings, land on the pink dot type of flying. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think, I think X-Plane really upped the game just in general in terms of scenery. And then when... Uh, you know, you get you get developers like um, like Orbix that jump over there, and and all the other ones now that have have made the uh, have have expanded. I shouldn't say they've they've made the jump. They've just they've expanded from just FSX and, and P3D, and they've they've added to what's already a really really good graphics engine. Um, and I think that's what X-Plane kind of hung their hat on is they said you know what FSX P3D you guys uh, you guys are well established with your Anyway, back to my point about X Plane. I, I think they realized that uh, P3D kind of was well established with the IFR and big airliners stuff like that and they said you know we're going to hang our hats on VFR flying we're going to we're going to really devote resources into um, making sure that our scenery looks good making sure that uh, we have good small GA aircraft and it was honestly it was just really a, a very smart marketing strategy because that's that's where that's where most of the people that kind of got their their feet wet and explain that's why they did it because they could go hop in the uh, the little Cessnas and they could fly around and see really amazing sights that were very very realistic and uh, so that was that was really good I think for everybody because P3D has kind of had to follow suit and which is good it makes me happy because I do enjoy this type of flying um, downwind saying do I do I ever use X plane and the answer to that's no. I, I have it. I have the demo downloaded, and I do. I'm interested, but I just have. I basically have spent the entire summer transitioning from an old PC to a new PC, and I'm even even right now. I'm still configuring what I have. Uh, you know what I what I had in P3D to this new machine. So I haven't the thought of. <laughs> It's taken me a lot longer than I, I thought it would. So the thought of doing that with X-Plane now, after I've just done it with P3D, is not very appealing. But at some point, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump over. Um, okay, left to uh, direct I-80, and we'll continue the departure southwest uh, 591. It was on sale even, I think, up until today for like thirty-five dollars or something like that. So. I am at, at some point I'm gonna I'm gonna do it, but I want to get um, I want to get P3D back to where it was, and, and actually I want to get it to better than what it was. I think I'm actually south. I think that's the lake. Holy cow! I must have drifted way south. Let's just let's just take a little bit of a little bit of a northwest heading here and just see. Uh, but anyway. Um, I want to. I want to really get this new machine. It's it's not a top of the line gaming PC, but it's much much better than what I had. And 
Um, I think I'm getting better results, but I'm still working through some things with, uh, you know, with my old aircraft or, or the aircraft from, from my old machine. And so, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work, a lot of time, but, you know, winters are cold around here where I live. And so I'm sure that when there's not so much other stuff that, you know, uh, that I like to do, like right now I'm outside yeah, that's, I think you're right. That's the city of Fond du Lac. So I think we somehow, that must not have been that municipal airport that we were shooting for. We must have hit one of those. That must not have been Manitoba. We must have come down here and hit maybe Sheboygan. Could that have been Sheboygan? I didn't notice a big city. Well, they both had the town kind of here, but that's for sure what I'm thinking so yeah I think we actually came down here and then well, let's just add that just for visual and then we kinda came here I should have looked to see if uh, there's an airfield over there that would be the dead giveaway wouldn't it if I've got a little airport uh, over there. Central, all off Alpha, 0, well, 355 for Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, Colorado, North Dakota, and uh, Minnesota. One way to find uh, out. Let's head up. And let's see if this is. Let's see if this is the west coast of Lake Winnebago. And if it is. We should uh, run into Oshkosh right up here somewhere. And being at the center of Southwest, that one, we're going to step away for two minutes on the climb. So sorry. It's looking promising because it kind of looks like there's another lake right here. And as I look at our scenery, we've got Lake Butte, Demors, Demorts, Demors, Lake Polygon, Poygan. <laughs> That's the old math teacher in me coming out. Sorry. So yeah, I, th I think, honestly, I think we're down here, and I don't know why it's not letting me put that in. Okay. Um, and so maybe, yeah, if we shoot up here, we'll see Whitman Regional. And maybe we'll swing by Rob, too. I don't know where he's at. Let me look here on my map. Um, ah, he's still he's still in the neighborhood. He's kind of off. He's probably already over the top of Whitman at this point in time. All right, back to uh, back to business here. The other map. Let's see what does that look like. Yep, Fond du Lac right there. There is an airport there. I, I wasn't able to see it, but there definitely is a couple of other lakes right here off of the northwest. So the Oshkosh Airport should be tucked right in that little that little elbow there. And man, I'm seeing something. Ooh, that's looking pretty Oshkoshy, isn't it? It's got the main one here. It's got the couple of other crosswinds. I think we have located our airport. Let's just fly around a little bit here and take a peek. They've got this massive grass area where they park everybody, as you guys all know. Yeah. Downwind Sim is agreeing. We found it. But uh, as you guys know, they just have so many aircraft. Now you're not lost. That's a good feeling. Yeah, that's it's always nice when you have a landmark of some sort that you can base off of and you know so we'll go back to our map here in just a second we'll kinda try to plot our heading but the amount of traffic the amount of aircraft that they get into this field is just unbelievable and some of those videos that those guys post the ATC chatter is just off the charts. The uh, 
you know what they ask you to do they'll land three planes on the same runway basically simultaneously it's just it's just got to be one of the most one of the biggest rushes you can have as a pilot to fly into Oshkosh yeah that's definitely Oshkosh it's got about those intersecting runways right there the two main runways all kinds of yeah the grass space I've flown in here oh yeah and I forgot they have that even that little is that little auxiliary runway that they have off the off the top there I do think that I'm gonna fly even says it doesn't it no I thought that was some words on the tarmac there yep that's that's our boy blue I'm actually a little surprised that yeah, some, some scenery developer hasn't done Oshkosh you know some big time like like Orbix hasn't come in and done Oshkosh all right let's uh, let's get back tracking to our southwest I don't know exactly where we'll get ourselves uh, lined out here straight and level and we'll pull our map back out and see where we need to go so since we are right here it looks like and Minneapolis Center Southwest Pound One back on comms. I'm thinking the Beaver Dam Lake is gonna be kind of our next kind of our next visual reference here. So um, somewhere in this uh, well there's even an airport there. Where is the airport at? Just on the opposite side. Okay, cool. So about two oh nine, you know, roughly. That should get us in the uh, in the ballpark anyway. And we'll stay here at four thousand five hundred. I think the visibility is acceptable for that. Rob, I hope you're doing well. Wherever you're at, I hope you're finding what you're looking for. Seemed like you were wandering off a little further to the to the west maybe you've got something else you're you're trying to see or something else you're trying to follow I don't know we're in search of Beaver Dam Lake and in particular see if we can find supposedly this little municipal airport here Yeah, no idea where Rob's going. Rob's going, he's going far to the, uh, farther to the west than we are right now, so he must have something else he's looking for. That's okay. We, we kind of know where we're at, so we're going to, we're going to stay on course here and hopefully be able to find this, this lake. And then from the lake, it's really kind of the same heading, you know, maybe a hair further to the west but yeah I don't know what other that might be that might be kind of the tough leg let me show you what I'm looking at here so you know as we're as we're flying down here from Oshkosh I think finding this beaver dam lake is going to be not too hard it's pretty pretty long and stringy and we should we should run into some part of it here but then the tricky part is going to be from here down to Madison. Now, the one thing we have going for us is we've got a pretty big city area that we should be able to see and a decent lake, Lake Mendota, and then kind of some other bodies of water here. So, um, you know, fairly good target to aim for, and it's going to be, for the most part, the same heading like I say I think right now we're about 209 and when we get to the to Beaver Dam Lake 
depending on where we hit it, you know, we're going to be more like 220-ish. So we might just you know, we might just bump it 10 degrees to the uh, to the west. But this is the this is the tough part then for VFR flight. I guess what we could do is this. How about if we went from Beaver Dam? How about we go just straight south? And let's pick up the uh, let's pick up Highway 151. And 151 takes us right right to the city of Madison. And somewhere in here, you know, we're obviously going to make a call. And if we had ATC, they'd give us some vectors if we asked. But if we stay on this 151, we should be able to pick up the airfield there at some point. That, I think that'll be our plan. Because I think, I think I see maybe Beaver Dam Lake coming up here. What do you think? Downwind is, I think, back over with... <laughs> they're having a lot of fun over at Slant Alpha on his channel. Let's take a listen here while we come up on Beaver Dam. Uh, so we kind of can see, we, we got definitely have um, some curving river up through here. And the town. And probably the Air Force kind of passing under our nose, I would think. This looks like that uh, curving body of water that then comes down into Lake Wisconsin, which I said we weren't going to see, but I think we are now seeing it. So let's just say if we were to head straight from Lake Wisconsin, Madison's going to be kind of off to the uh, 150 from there. Let's go ahead and get a weather briefing in Wisconsin and Madison, since we're kind of getting close. Switch back over here. Doesn't look like there is an ADIS running. Yeah, there's no ADIS running in Wisconsin. Madison's Wisconsin, so we'll just go KMSN. Pop that in there. 140 at 4 knots. 4 statute miles in ADIS. We are going to be barely on the, uh, on the uh, high end of the, of the BFR legality there. 4 statute miles. Uh, he already gave us the oxygen 3001. Uh, so with wind at 140 at 4, what runway are we going to want here at Madison? We've got a, uh, we've got a 14, so we'll just, we'll just uh, aim for that. And we're coming in off of Lake Wisconsin. We're going to be coming one more or less. A uh, straight in for that, looks like. So I think that'll be our plan. Great right Lake Wisconsin will turn to about a 145, says Sky Vector. Yeah, so he's coming in more from the uh, west side, and we're actually coming the opposite direction. Hopefully we won't meet in the middle, but uh, you heard him talking about the uh, the weather forecast here, and the winds 140 at 4, that's not really an issue, but yeah, 4 statute miles with haze, that's the problem. And so hopefully that won't get too much lower. This is definitely, I'm feeling very confident that this is Beaver Dam Lake. And again, once we get to Beaver Dam Lake, the plan is to head due south and pick up Highway 151. Both of the maps do show that, by the way. Sky Vector and Navigraph. That's that pretty major highway. And so I feel good about figuring if we can, like I say, if we can find 151, we can head ourselves towards Madison. Let's see how well it's modeled, though, because you never know. Okay, turning south. Farm country. Isn't it? 
Looks like we have a little bit of a little bit of a town in which yeah it's kind of what uh, kind of what it's showing here on Sky Vector is that we have a little bit of a I don't know what the name of that town is but a little bit of a population area we have also a municipal airport over here just to our east I don't know if we'll be able to see that or not but that would be again just that much more confirmation that we're heading in the right direction the main thing we're looking for here is probably this road here, Highway 151, Madison, going to be out that direction somewhere. We're getting pretty close now. I think we're within about 30 miles of the airfield. We could have a VOR here, yeah, 1086. If we... If we have to have to, we'll, we'll toss that guy in just to just to see where we're at. But I I'm just curious to see if we can't. It, it all depends on how well this road is is modeled. I see a little flash. That can't be. I mean, Slant Alpha's over here somewhere. Downwind Sims telling me that's the town of Beaver Dam. Yeah, weather in the Sims, they do. They look quite a bit different. It's interesting because I think, I think Rob is also using Active Sky, Active Sky for X Plane. All right. Well, I think this is our road. So we're gonna turn about two two zero and just keep that road kind of off of our left wing so I can see it. Don't have great visibility here in this plane as far as looking off to the side, so I kind of have to keep, like if I'm tracking a road like this, I kind of need to stay to one side of it or the other. You can see it off my nose pretty well, though. And let's just kind of, let's see where it, where it leads us. Again, we have a very big, yep, Downwind Sim is, is confirming kind of our plan here. Follow Highway 151 Southwest, then the town of Columbus. At least I feel like we've got a solid game plan here. So we just we just flew by. Basically, we were we were kind of more over here, and we saw this town. We're going to be on 151. Our next town is Columbus. And then the next town after that is Sun Prairie. And by that point, I think we're probably picking up our airfield and we can figure out what we need to do as far as approaches. Winds were 141, so let's just take a quick peek here at the airport diagram. Not using Navigraph as much today, so got a runway 1A. Oh, we have a runway 1-4, so I think that's what we'll do is uh, make for runway 1-4. Do I see anything crazy, or are we just a standard left traffic? Yep, I'm not seeing anything left traffic. So what we'll probably do here somewhere around maybe Sun Prairie is, is in our left downwind kind of at a 45 make our left base come in and land on runway 14 nice long 5800 foot runway so that should be that should be very doable here here's our town town of Columbus who was very close can't be more than 10 miles from town of Beaver Dam and our highway just kind of continuing to meander down the way, which is good. Haziness, you can see it's starting to creep up a little bit. Peeking over here, see how close uh, Slanty is to getting. Looks like he's on descent already. So he's, uh, he's going to be well out of our way, I think, by the time we get there. Not 
not going to worry about making a text call here. Elevation, field elevation is 8,800, so we'll be, need to be about 1,900. I will start that descent here. Likes to descend pretty fast. Bring the speed back just a little bit, just to make sure that, make sure that Slant Alpha has plenty of time to get on the ground here. We don't get it get in his way. I don't see anybody else in the neighborhood as I'm checking Batastic. This guy's going to Minneapolis. This guy's not a factor. There is Rob. We're going to be here entering downwind base and following him to runway 14. Very good, very good. As we're descending, let's listen to his approach and see how he does. Getting mixed and props slowly advanced. And I'm just going to make sure I'm lined up with the here. I can, I can see the airport. I can't necessarily pick out where I'm going to be. Okay, so we're going to Okay, you can see the difference. He's quite a bit clearer than we are. The other thing, though, the other thing to note is a lot of times he'll fly a little earlier in the day. He doesn't like to, he doesn't have great cockpit lighting, and so sometimes his time of day will be a little different than, than ours. back to doing what I'm doing here. He looks like he's in good shape. And we are down to 1900. There's our town. Town of Columbus. Seeing much yet as far as airfields. I am down a little Cause bit low. Not available. Uh oh, that's not good. Maybe you descended just a little too soon, but that's okay. Try to keep that speed right about 150. Okay, I see a runway light. So I think Cause we're in the available. in the neighborhood. Maybe we'll see. Rob coming in here. I think he's looking for us as well. But all right, we're gonna turn. So it was uh, the heading was one, 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 one four zero. So right now we are ready to enter in. Our downwind leg. We'll make that turn. Just again, trying to stay out of Rob's way, trying to stay out of any of the other any other traffic in the area. The official heading is 139er, so we let's make sure that's set. Didn't see Rob. He's on final. Let's see if we can get a little peek there. Okay, there is the airfield for sure. 
There's our runway heading this direction. We're going to go ahead, take it out here a little further. Speed's picked up just a little. We don't need that. Rob is on short final. Man, we should see him. He should just be right out here somewhere. We might be just a little too far. Oh, nope. That's just a just a dirt spot on my window. There he is, right there. I don't know how well you can see that, but there's Rob. So um, we're good to turn base. At this point, we're clear of him. Try to get our speed where it needs to be. There can that P41 V sign be at the killer pre arrival runway once you right transition. Downwind Sim says, do you have the ADA set? MSN, yeah, we just picked that up a little bit ago. Showing our surface winds 140 at 4. 4 statute miles with haze. Actually, as we're getting closer to the airfield, I feel better about that. I just overshot my runway? Maybe. Well, now as I say that, <laughs> it is ugly. Okay, no, I haven't sh overshot my runway quite yet. That was... This has three different runways if I'm looking at the chart, right? We are going to use, with this haze, we're going to use our VOR just a little bit to help us. Hope that's okay. Alright, and we're going to hand fly the, the rest of this approach just because... I love this plane so much. It's so fun to fly. And that's the reason why we do this, right? We don't want the computer to have all the fun. Don't spill the A&Ws. I will not. I actually just have high quality H2O right now because I had a couple of A&Ws when I went out for the birthday dinner tonight. So I don't need any more sugar. My wife tells me I'm sweet enough as it is. Rob is down safely on the ground. Good to know. Slant Alpha. Here comes our VOR. Let's make our turn to final. All right. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of lights, and none of them look like they're lining up with what I want. This is not one of the major runways here, you can tell. I think this is runway 18 here, and this is runway 21. But we should be somewhere in the vicinity here. I see something. Yep, right there. Okay, so we're just... This is not the localizer uh, for runway 14. This is just the uh, the localizer for the airfield, so... Add our first notch of flaps. We're just a touch high. And we'll drop our gear. We're not too bad, though. <coughs> Excuse me. We're down the end of the runway in a left-hand exit to the FBO. 500. All right, we're back in uh, back in business here. Actually, got ourselves a little bit too low. Final notch of flaps. Runway 14, it is. And see if we can hold that center line. And 
we are down. I did not see where Rob ended up, and again, his, uh, his scenery is quite a bit different than mine, but... I showed the FBO just off the left hand side here so we'll head that way see if we can connect with him not seeing him anywhere over here hmm all right we're gonna cheat holy Moses that camera setting is turned up high. Like that. Green hazardous weather information connects to signal 41 Central. Where did he go? Or Minnesota, South Dakota, North Dakota, concerning area severe thunderstorms 42 Central. Oh, he's way Florida, over there. Nebraska, South Dakota, and Colorado, concerning area severe thunderstorms. Well, I'll taxi that way and while. For the information available from high watts or flight service. While we taxi that way, I will tell you what we've got coming up on the stream here. It was a little soupy downwind, but not too bad. We were able to uh, really have pretty good visibility all the way in. Just had that one little spot where I thought maybe I jinxed myself, but held up okay. A little bit long on the landing, but uh, that's all right. Did not spill the A&Ws. That's the, that's the key thing here. Alright, there's Rob. We'll head over there and, uh, yeah, we'll tell you what we've got coming up. I say we, I mean me. I'm a one-man operation here. Um, but uh, tomorrow night we're going to be up in the Boston area. The BVARTC crew is hosting a GA fly-in. You say GA fly-in, I say how high. Um, they're doing, it's called the main event, and... It's featuring one of the air, airfields is Bar Harbor. And so what I want to do is I want to hop in the de Havilland DHC-2 Beaver. And I want to fly from the Heron's Nest into Bar Harbor. Uh, we flew out to Bar Harbor, uh, sorry, out to the Heron's Nest the other day. And so I thought it'd be kind of a fun return flight. Um, again, the planned departure time is right around zero our midnight Zulu but that's always an, an estimated time uh, it just kind of depends but uh, that's coming up tomorrow and then uh, Friday it's the summer sizzle that's the FNO title and they're having some uh, fun down in the, in the Dallas Fort Worth area we are going to fly the DC well either the DC 8 or the 737 from Denver down to Dallas Fort Worth one or the other and then uh, Saturday whichever one of those planes we don't fly to Dallas Fort Worth we're gonna fly from Miami to Atlanta because ZTL has an event ZTL live that's happening there and they're featuring Atlanta as uh, their their main airport there so um, oh that's not Rob that's a that's a corporate jet so um, yeah I have no idea I'm flying over to somebody that I have no idea who it is which this is the main terminal area which that makes sense um, yeah holy cow what's the deal well that's the way it is man it's how we roll here sometimes but uh, yeah that's what we've got coming up uh, this week of course uh, you know any night there's a chance for a flight yeah, when everybody's in bed sleeping and uh, I need just something to do that's this is generally what I do so um, you never know check us out always be looking for us sometime around midnight yeah Rob he disappeared man I don't know where you went hope your flight went well hope your day was fantastic and uh, yeah I'm not gonna make you watch the rest of this taxi at the default airport 
I'm going to cut you loose. We're going to end the stream right here. I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening. Happy Monday. Take care, everyone. God bless.